Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 59. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do this video on the first of every month. Uh, admittedly, it is not the first, uh, but, you know, I was at the Bitcoin conference and just haven't really had a good time to, to make this video. But as of June 4th, 2025, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at around 3.298 trillion, with the fair value logarithmic regression trend line now at 3.878 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 15% or so. This is nothing that we haven't seen before. In fact, this is kind of just a continuation of what we've seen for this entire cycle, where the asset class trends higher with time but it's mainly just Bitcoin leading. And we've actually seen that before. Uh, for those that were around in the 2016 cycle, uh, a lot of the movement by the asset class back then was also Bitcoin. Now, there were some other cryptocurrencies that made pretty big moves back then, uh, obviously Ethereum being one. But you also have to remember back then that the Bitcoin, you know, the Bitcoin dominance was relatively high. So even when you had some of the smaller market cap stuff moving, it wasn't necessarily having as big of an effect. Normally, though, at least in the last couple of cycles, when the asset class is below, quote unquote, the fair value longer than the regression trend line, normally it's Bitcoin leading. And in order to go durably overvalued, you need the rest of the asset class to participate, which is not really something that we've seen happen this cycle so far. And and you can see that Bitcoin has has gone or sorry, the asset class as a whole has gone above the fair value a few times, but they've all sort of been head fakes, right? Where it, it really didn't lead to anything. And one of the things, one of the reasons why I think it hasn't led to anything more sustained is because of the macro uncertainty and the tighter monetary policy that we've had this cycle compared to prior cycles. There's a lot of people out there saying, you know, it's, it's having a hard time making sense of this cycle, how altcoins just continue to bleed and, and, and Bitcoin's doing very, very well. But we've actually seen that in prior cycles as well. Uh, it's just that a lot of people are sort of operating under recency bias and what they saw last cycle in, you know, in sort of late 2020, early 2021. But if you're around the crypto asset class in 2019, during similar types of monetary policy conditions, if you're around the asset class in 2016, uh, we also saw similar things where the asset class would just kind of slowly go up. But it was mostly because of Bitcoin and and not really the rest of the asset class, and that's why we you know we spent so much time focusing on that that idea. Um, but regardless, what you'll notice is that through the years, the asset class goes through long periods of undervaluation and overvaluation. And just because it's undervalued doesn't mean it's going to immediately go overvalued, as we have seen this cycle. And just because it's overvalued doesn't mean it has to immediately go undervalued. Okay. Um, but there certainly are times where you'll get these head fakes where it'll go slightly overvalued and then kind of come back down. For, for a little while. Uh, one of the things you can do with this is you can actually take the, well, first of all, you could actually look at, we can overlay uh, the summary risk onto this chart. And that at least gives us an idea of the overall risk on the asset class as a whole. Um, and you can, you can isolate, um, you know, you can isolate just say some of the lower wristbands, right? And kind of see you know, where we are this cycle compared to prior cycles. And ultimately, I think in order to get a durable rally above these levels, what you would really need to see, I mean, you, you probably would need to see an end to quantitative tightening, you would probably need to see some of the macro uncertainty go away, that could involve things like seeing inflation just kind of settle around 2%, uh, perhaps not get a big spike due to the tariffs. Um, and you would also want to see the unemployment rate uh, stay relatively well behaved. I, I think that those are the main things that are that are keeping the asset class from really going durably overvalued. Because while it's true that we have remained below the fair value uh, in many prior cycles, at this point, we've always gone durably overvalued, at least before this point. For instance, last cycle, the durable overvaluation occurred at the end of the halving year. Uh, the cycle before that, it occurred... Uh, in May of 2017. We're already past that, right? We're now in June. 
And in the cycle before that, it occurred in March of 2013, right at the post having year. So we've already kind of extended beyond uh, the normal time it has taken in, in prior cycles to get to a sort of a durable overvaluation point. It doesn't mean it can't happen. It just might need to come on the back of, you know, change, you know, further changes in monetary policy, uh, whether it's an end of quantitative tightening, lower interest rates, um, you know, maybe passing, you know, a bill that expands the, the deficit by several, you know, by a large amount. Maybe that would, would have some effect. But, you know, at least for the most part, this cycle has been mostly just sort of a, a Bitcoin cycle, if we're being honest. And um, we have seen that kind of stuff in the past, right? And in order to see a durable overvaluation rally, you need the altcoin market to, to participate. You need the rest of the market to participate. And it just, you know, there really hasn't been uh i guess the right macroeconomic conditions to support that uh, at least up until now i mean again it doesn't mean that it can't change just that that's what's happened so far uh, but what you can do is you can actually take the percent difference between the fair value and the uh, total market cap and if you do that you get a chart that looks like this and so you can actually see how sort of these overvaluation levels topped out out around the same spot and you can see that in the last year, they also kind of bottomed out around the same spot. So the asset class as a whole is, you know, is the fair value arguably is growing. And while this undervaluation in April of 2025 wasn't, the, the, the total market cap was not as low as July of 2024 because the fair value changed. It was undervalued to the same extent, if not even slightly more in April of 2025. And so... This is is certainly something uh, to watch here, right? Because, you know, normally, normally when you get, you know, when you have these cycles, you can have a couple of head fakes, right? Like it's not that uncommon to see the asset class try to durably break out to overvaluation territory. But again, normally by this point, it's already a done deal. And, and this cycle, we've seen that it's actually not happened like the prior cycles. Now, if you follow this channel, obviously you've been on the right side of that trade. Uh, that's why we talk about Bitcoin dominance so much. And, and you know, about we talked about Ethereum going home, which it finally did. Um, and, and ever since then, you know, ETH Bitcoin has done relatively well. Uh, but I do think the altcoin market on their Bitcoin pairs likely still need to go down more. That doesn't mean that they, you know, that doesn't necessarily talk, mean anything about their USD valuations. But I do think that the most likely outcome is for alts to go down on their Bitcoin pairs. Uh, and it could, of course, occur on a higher low uh, by ETH Bitcoin. Um, and I, I think that might be what is ultimately needed uh, to perhaps set set things up for a more durable rally to the overvaluation territory. Um, but again, we just haven't seen that yet. Like the, the puzzle pieces are coming together, you know, that we've talked about. It's just taking a long time. Ultimately, you know, my goal for the asset class, as I've said, I mean, right now it's at around 3.3 trillion. My ultimate end goal, maybe not end goal, because after we reach it, I'm sure I'll just raise it. But eventually, I, I think the asset class should hit uh, approximately 10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends.